everyone. Again, welcome back to NWR's virtual investor conference. Day three, a big day. We've got lots of companies to get through. Uh, next on the list, uh, we will shortly be hearing from Steve McGovern and James Slaney from Dubber. Um, Dubber is, of course, the world's most scalable, unified call recording service and voice intelligent cloud adopted as core network infrastructure um, by multiple global leading telecommunication companies right across the world, North America, Europe, and Asia. Um, Dubber allows service providers to offer call recording for compliance, business intelligence, sentiment analysis, AI, and more on any phone. It is unlocking the potential of voice data from any call or conversation as a disruptive in innovator in the multi-billion dollar call recording industry. It's a software as a service, of course, um, but let's get straight into it. Um, I'm going to hand over to Steve McGovern, the CEO. Of course, don't forget if you've got any questions um, for Steve and James, you can pop them into the Q&A box uh, while the presentation is on or indeed at the end, and I'll be back soon with the Q&A. Steve, over to you. Morning, thank you very much. So James will join us for the Q&A session. I'll just give a, an overview of where the company's at and, and what we do for, for people who've not maybe uh, spent any time with us before. Um, and we look forward to your feedback, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so Dubber, uh, very, very simply, we, we are designed to unlock the content of phone calls in the world's largest telephone networks. So if you think that's where the source of the call is made, it's very, very content rich data. And so the plan for the business today has been to build a platform that's capable of scaling uh, the way that a telco would uh, serve its own customers and have, have the product served that way. So in other words, probably a, a really good example would be if, if a bank over here wanted to deploy call recording, there'd be a scoping uh, period, there'd be a, a project period for contact center, maybe four or 5,000 employees. What we do, because if, if they're on a network that we're on, such as Telstra or Optus, they could switch all 20, 30,000 employees on immediately without even telling Dubber. So, so we're natively built um, with the telco network and we serve our product in a way that a telco would serve uh, voicemail or any of its own um, products. So the whole point here is that we think this content rich data embedded into every single phone call and we're about giving the end users and the telcos the opportunity to capture that and make it available for endless user cases um, around AI. <clears throat> so the, the first things first, the, the goals of the company are to win the network. And, and we'll show you a slide later on where we now have um, 150 telco networks globally who've chosen our platform. Um, we're, we're also expanded recently into the other UC platforms because I think we're all aware we're using Zoom right now and, and we announced um, an integration or a, availability of Microsoft Teams which we'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. And so it, it opens up this notion of unified call recording, whereby whether you're using your, um, your handset on your desk or whether you're using your mobile or whether you're using one of these UC platforms such as Teams or Cisco WebEx Calling, um, you can actually capture the data and store it in one place and make it usable across your entire business and network. And so um, what, we, what we then do, of course, is we open up via our APIs, the ability to connect that into any of your workflow or your operating systems such as Salesforce. So that's what we do. Now, voice, we believe, is the largest untapped source of data and insights. And um, when we think about, we'll, we'll talk about, I guess, what the double difference in a few minutes, um, but we're, we're all about looking at using the scale of our platform to deliver um, the outcomes that an enterprise needs. But we, we're actually a company that focuses on the network, not the enterprise. Every other call recording company is really enterprise first. We're about serving from the network. And that's the, really the core double difference. We're a single platform that the telco connects its network into. And um, obviously that means when we talk about unified call recording, we can have multiple networks, multiple platforms coming into our into our um, into our Dubber platform, which enables the end user to, to store things centrally and manage them centrally. So what we're looking to do is that regulatory regulatory requirements, of course, are increasing globally. And there was a challenge this year because of distributed workforces, whereby you know even some of the banks in Europe, which are subject to strict privacy and financial services regulation, they were challenged because they were, they were for the first time some of their contact center people working from home. 
Those regulations have been tightened this year. I think um, you know the FCA, which is a regulatory body in the UK, has said that last year was a bit of a honeymoon period where, where businesses got their act together in terms of working out how to deploy infrastructure for people working from home. This year has changed. You know, there's an expectation level now that cloud services are available to be able to assist with regulatory requirements. And that's what Dubba's built for. And so obviously, you know, when you think about a COVID world and people being distributed um, in, a, in a workforce sense, that really, I guess that's in our sweet spot because we're aligned to all of those uh, unified communications platforms that, that provide that technology uh, capability. But what we'd, what we'd like to think is we're a lot more than that because we think also that, um, you know, getting into the sentiment of the calls, understanding what's said in calls um, also helps productivity. It helps understand how the workforce is going, for example, in a distributed um, situation. Uh, we're aware of an airline in Australia that was really concerned about, you know, in a COVID world where it's taking lots of negative calls around cancellations and frustrations, et cetera, how, how its people were working um, at home, contact center people working at home in their front room, um, taking 50, 60 calls a day, which are all, you know, quite impressive phone calls. So, so it's a bit more than regulatory requirements. It's also understanding what's in the call and using it either to, you know, in the use case of just giving it to understand and monitor your workforce, um, or obviously productivity um, in line with any other workforce application you've got in your business. So where the end game is for Dubba, we honestly genuinely believe, and we've got you know, support from our carriers, we think that artificial intelligence or AI will actually be a standard feature in, any, in every phone network offering. So you know, in, in a couple of years time, depending on which network you're on, we think that the ability to transcribe a call will be actually served to you as, as a standard feature from um, a telco service provider. Uh, we think that then the, you can use that transcription to, uh, to gain AI insights. We think that certain carriers will provide their own AI features um, across the entire network. And that's really where you see Dubba at its best, at, at what it's designed to be for. So um, whilst call recording is a clear and present opportunity for us and we disrupt that market, it really is about having AI on every phone. And we believe the, tel the telco service providers are gonna go, go down that path. And our platform is built exactly for that purpose. And that's what makes Dubba unique in terms of its architecture. <clears throat> so we talked very, very quickly about uh, the next generation of call recording. I don't want really to labor on this in a, in a 15 minute presentation, but the, the keys to it are, it's all about capturing the call um, seamlessly from multiple sources and then serving it up with an open, in an open platform where that data can be used. And that's really where Dubba um, is able to provide a difference. We're very disruptive in this market because every other recording service is aimed pretty, particularly at the, um, at the enterprise level. And obviously we're, we're uh, tapping the calls at the source of the call in the network. So not all call recording is the same. Um, I gave you an example earlier on, um, which I won't reiterate. It, it is really about high availability for us and instant connectivity across um, a distributed set of endpoints. Uh, an example in, in the States at the moment, we have a carrier partner who is looking to serve um, recording as a service to a, a franchise business or a, where there are several thousand stores in America. Uh, it couldn't happen with a on-premise or hardware or hosted solution. Whereas with, with Dubber through the actual network, wherever the phone calls are, we're, we're in there behind the phone calls and obviously it can be turned on immediately. So that it really quickly gives you an idea of the difference. Excuse me. Oh. And um, as I say, the, um, the key element for us is that recently we've announced um, a Microsoft Teams capability. Maybe just take you through that for a minute because um, we, we talk about 150 telco networks and um, we're talking here about AT&T, Verizon. Um, we're talking about O2 networks in the UK, Telstra, Optus, some of the, lar the world's largest telcos. And, they, and depending on their strategy, they, they sometimes view us just as recorded at the moment. So, you know, we're in for the long term. Uh, once we're built into the network and once their network's connected to our platform, we believe that we'll never come out. We think it's an enduring um, network integration. And of course, once you start capturing the calls and serving up the data, uh, it's a very, very sticky proposition and one on which the telco can build additional revenue streams. 
But we're also expanding into some of the new unified communications players. So a key relationship for Dabo is actually with Cisco. So if you think about Cisco, Cisco has 92 million users of um, a, a, a phone service called Call Manager. Um, this is where you've got your Cisco handset sitting on your desk. Their goal is to move those um, users onto their cloud platform, which is called Cisco WebEx Calling. They've chosen Dubbo as a recording service that's built natively into that service. And so not, all, not only are we part of the order entry system, but we're part of what's called the provisioning system. So we're actually served um, by Cisco in, in a, as part of the, the stack when they deploy um, at their Cisco cloud service. So we're the only one, it's exclusive uh, in that arrangement. And we think obviously, you know, that's um, a very powerful uh, revenue generating opportunity for us. We, we have, however, just announced Microsoft Teams. And to give you an idea how that works, we're a compliant cloud recording service with Teams. We're the only one that's certified for it in that sense. And if there are, for example, 27 people on a Teams call, we get 27 individual streams and then stitch them back together. And that um, is, a, is a real win in terms of being able to manage compliance and also the quality of the transcriptions on the data. So very simply, we believe that in today's workplace, you're going to use a desk phone, you're going to use a mobile, you're going to be using um, you know, Microsoft Teams or Cisco from, or Zoom from home, you're going to be shooting videos, conferences, and we have a unique capability to be at the center of all that, store all those calls into one uh, location because we're actually connected to the telco networks that are part of that um, ecosystem. <clears throat> Now, how do we create value? The first thing we do, obviously, we sell to the actual telco itself, and then we sell with their sales teams and their channels. We have um, an enablement plan where we have access to the end users ourselves to be able to actually go directly to the end user via the application. And what we mean by that is, if you have call recording, we can talk about whether you want to transcribe the calls. We can talk about whether you want to extend storage. We can talk about some of the API connections into things like Salesforce. And they give us the ability to go directly to the end user through the application and, um, and increase the revenue via ARPU on, on each user. And we're, we're starting to see that now, having been a call recording company to date, that's probably the biggest change in our company at the moment. Um, you, that illustrates exactly what I've just said, where you're building on call recording or basic UCR, and then you're adding controls and insights and AI to it. And uh, our financial model is all recurring revenue. So I think if you look at the key metrics in the company going forward, uh, users are very, a very good indicator of progress, but in reality, it's how many telco networks we're connected to for the reasons I've expressed, and obviously our ARR. And if you have a look at our performance at the moment, um, I'll come back to that in a second. Oh, we haven't got, we haven't got performance slides. Um, the, the ARR has gone um, from, uh, 16 million in June, in June uh, last year to about just under 30 million were reported at um, December quarter. Uh, there's an acquisition in there that's added, you know, substantially to it as well. But in line with a five-year business strategy, that ticks our, our year one goal with a combination of organic growth and, and an acquisition as well. And so when we, when we think about a SaaS five-year strategy, it's broken down into three parts, really, which is year one to double the size of the business, which we've achieved. Um, year three is about expanding that across the existing base opportunities. Um, pretty much if you've got the momentum to achieve in year three, then year five, um, I wouldn't say takes care of itself, but you're in a really, really good position to extend, expand, and get network effect. And so we're, we're really pleased to achieve our first year um, targets in six months. Um, the business is growing uh, at a rate. Um, you know, we, we've got a strategy now where our platform, our opportunity is scalable. It's a global opportunity across all the large networks uh, globally. The technology is scalable to be able to handle that opportunity. We as a business need to grow our business and put people in, in place, which um, you know, is, is a major focus for us at the moment. We actually have more telco partners than we do people in the business. So obviously that clearly uh, needs, needs to change. Um, but we're doing it in a way that enables us to achieve our quarterly figures as well, because obviously we respect that we're a listed company with shareholders who have expectations. But it really is now about scaling the business up. Um, we have the cash to do it. We have uh, reported $42 million in cash in December. So we think we're in a really, really good opportunity to deliver on the opportunity by scaling the business. And that's pretty much where Dubber's at. 
and I'll bring James in. Great, thanks, Steve. Are you guys open to questions now, or are we yeah, doing? Sure. Some, yeah, yeah. Um, no more slides. Excellent. Um, I'm sure you're probably expecting this question. <laughs> I know a lot of people want to know the answer. Are you targeting Zoom as a potential partner? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we um, the message that we've just delivered really is is all around unified call recording, and um, you know, we we would expect to be able to productize that very quickly, very soon. Okay. Um, very soon sounds like a pretty imminent timeline. I'll leave it at that. Um, a question from Adam. It's good that you're signing up companies, but how many individual users are you converting to paying subscribers? Yeah, so um, to give you an idea of the growth, we, we had um, uh, 192,000 users in June. Uh, we reported over 300,000 users in December. Um, users are quite an interesting challenge for us at the moment because we've got some uh, in a positive way because we've expanded now into a consumption model. So we recently announced a, um, a expansion of our relationship with AT&T. And um, part of that is we're, we're on a network called IP Toll Free, where it's, it's hosting 75 billion minutes of calls a month um, for the America's top companies. So there are, there are, there are thir uh, 30 of them no, sorry, there are 75 companies doing more than 100 million minutes a month. And it's actually billed on a per minute basis rather than a per user basis because it's inbound calls. So you actually don't know how many users are on the end of, of um, you know, those, uh, those 1-800, if you like, type numbers. So um, our user numbers have doubled as well, pretty much, um, since, um, since June. And we'll continue to publish those numbers, but I think it's more important at the moment to focus on the ARR because the commercial revenue opportunities are as much consumption-based as they are user-based at the moment. But yes, there's utility in the platform, obviously. Okay. Um, it, it strikes me, you know, um, the, the compliance use case is one thing. You obviously have integrated with a lot of um, CRM platforms such as Salesforce. Where is the blue sky? Is it is it in that kind of CRM sort of sales um, uh, area? I think the, the, the blue sky is the end of a journey up towards it, really. And at the moment, regulatory is really important. It's low hanging fruit. Um, we, um, particularly in Europe at the moment, are seeing a lot of expansion around developing out um, the requirements for compliance work for people working from home and the carriers at the forefront of that as our Microsoft Teams. And I think, you know, one of the things to understand for those people who, who don't know what the telco landscape is, when we talk about Microsoft Teams, they're working with British Telecom, they're working with O2, they're working with all telephonic of a large um, Telstra, for example. So it might be a Microsoft Teams connection, but it's actually part of a Telstra relationship, or it's part of an O2 relationship, or it's part of a British Telecom relationship. So I think the first, if you like, layer, as we take, as we take off, it's still compliance. Um, exactly what you're talking about regarding um, integration of that data into uh, business tools such as Salesforce. I think that's layer two. The real blue sky for Dubba is when a large carrier decides that it wants to have AI for every phone as a standard service on its mobile network and actually allows customers in the same way that voicemails on a mobile network, you have the ability to transcribe a call on the fly. That's the blue sky for Dubber. And we think that every service provider we work with will have that at some point, And hopefully we can demonstrate that really clearly. Because I think ultimately that opens up the content in every phone call and it gives the carrier um, the opportunity to build its own revenue streams as well. Just to add to that a little bit, is that um, as much as we talk about compliance, uh, what we're seeing is with the shift from all businesses going to cloud at the moment because of you know, the understanding of COVID, uh, <laughs> You know, we connect to carriers that have serviced large enterprise right down to small business. So we're seeing that the requirements for compliance right down to general traditional reasons to record phone calls is a demand for our growth at the moment and satisfies our, what our, I suppose our objectives are, our aspirations for our current targets are. Uh, and what Steve was saying is really, if you come back to the, the core of what our platform can do, which is we've got access into a carrier network that has potentially millions and millions of users on that network, um, and our scale of how we capture and inter interact with that content is where the blue sky, as what Steve was saying, is really opened up with the potential of what the technology can do for, the, for a carrier network of scale. Um, you guys must, you're in a very interesting position because obviously you're working um, with lots of really big companies 
helping them on the compliance side. But I'm interested um, in, in what your view is going forward so the compliance side for, as you say, like anyone can use AI to, to record and transcribe a call. Where do you think um, the, the sort of the regulatory landscape will get up to in terms of this? And, and you know, putting all this into a C CRM, for example, the use of third party data and all that kind of stuff, what conversations are you having now about what, you know, what this looks like two or three years down the track? Well, I think the first thing is um, for people will say, well, hold on a minute, this, call, this actual Zoom call is being recorded. So, I mean, what, what, where, where does Dubba fit in? But the reality is that it's not compliant. So, you know, if you, the rule of thumb is if you can manage, listen, delete a recording, then it can't be compliant because compliance is based on somebody within your organization having the ability to do that rather than you doing it yourself. So, you know, on, I, there's a mobile app recording up on your iPhone. There's a, you, you're recording this call on Zoom, but they're not compliant. And so it's a really important question. I mean, you'll probably answer this better in terms of what we're doing in the, in the UK, for example. I mean, what do you, compliance at the moment is just huge, isn't it? Yeah, really? so I, I guess in regards to uh, the question around, specifically around how Dubbo fits in with compliance, is we sit across the whole of the network um, in relation to how we, like, I suppose the question we could tie back to uh, how we can look at Zoom, Microsoft Teams, these are all services that are run by vendors and large vendors, as we know. Uh, we've got a massive network with carriers as well. So, you know, with um, O2 and in the UK, you've got Telstra in Australia. With overlapping those networks with these vendors such as Microsoft Teams, um, what we see is that the compliance market is where we can capture across the whole of an entity, across any type of communication service they may be having, and centralise into a single platform that has the functionality and the, and the ability to, to satisfy how they need to be regulated for compliance type call recording or recording of data um, and how they want to access and, and interact with that data. Um, again, that's where we're seeing that, that's where we're winning business at, at the moment because uh, they're looking at that, they know the market's moving quite fast. They're going with Teams today. They might go with, with Zoom in two years time. Uh, the procurement cycles of those, those services are changing quite fast. And because we sit across most, pretty much everything, um, not Zoom yet, but they're looking at Dubbo saying with, we're the choice that sits in a way where they can go with their current strategy around acquisition of product and we can be, we can move with them as they change their communication services or expand them. Maybe maybe the back of your question though, I think is that there are some regulators and there are some enterprises who don't realise they can actually achieve what we can provide them at a cost effective price. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm a risk manager of a bank with 30,000 people in it, I probably think, how do I actually make my, my team comply? It's going to cost me a fortune. It's going to take two years to put in. Um, and the regulators in some countries also don't, they think there are technology and cost impost to actually achieving regulation. Um, the UK is a fast move on this. And, and the FCA came out in, in January and realized, you know, if you're going to deploy Microsoft Teams for your workforce at home, you've got to record it and make it compliant. And that's where we fit in there. So it is, it's a fast moving pace, but it's very, uh, jurisdictional based in terms of what the awareness is of, of, of the capability. And we actually just add some stuff, we add to that is where if you go back four or five years ago, it was literally around the compliance. It was around capturing the data, but really not having instant access to it. It wasn't about using the data for compliance. Today, we're seeing that the largest of enterprises are thinking that they need to access the data immediately across their whole enterprise, not just a small percentage of it and be samples of data. Yeah. They want to know or be proactively told about issues within their business. Um, so with the platform, this is what we're delivering to them where they can really instantly access all the data and be proactively informed that there's something that there's a nom an anomaly in their business, which they should be looking at and investigating further. Um, just going back uh, to what you mentioned about, um, I guess, awareness of this capability, are there any markets uh, where you see which is just this, this is glaringly wide open and, and you're trying to get into? From a regulatory perspective, the UK at the moment is um, is a real opportunity for us, and um, and so we've we're in a really good position there with, um, with with new relationships and with some of the large carriers, and it's really it's an environment where the reg, you know GDPR for privacy of data is 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 pretty strict obviously in Europe and the UK has adopted that and um, and also the regulatory financial services requirements in the UK are very very strict compared to Australia and so they um, the telcos themselves are moving very quickly to work with these um, UC partners like Microsoft and Cisco and Ring Central and people like that and um, and there's a real sort of melting pot of understanding of capability. 
And we're in a very, very fortunate position where anyone who looks to put that compliance piece in place ends up looking at us as the option. And um, that, that's the, if anything's happened to us this quarter, that's, that's what's been happening to us on, on, a, on a macro scale in the UK in particular. Mm. Um, and so outside the UK, the Asia? Uh, yeah, so we, we um, when we talk about, and probably James can touch on this, but obviously uh, one of the problems we've got as a company is that we're still relatively small. Uh, you know, we're 130, 140 people. Um, we, what, we've we got a ball the ocean strategy. And so we need to make sure that our, our you know, we can, we can achieve that um, through our own means. But the reality, where am I heading? We're, we're doing transcription really in a number of languages, but we're trying to avoid the low revenue type regions where transcription in multiple languages might be more challenging for us. And it really is just an ROI proposition, really. There's enough in the US, the UK, Canada, Europe, for us to have a, a real crack at the moment where, where regulatory requirements are very, very um, defined and we fit neatly into it. So, so really Europe, the US, Australia, et cetera, still our still our focus at the moment. We haven't even scratched the surface at the moment in, in those areas. Yeah. Um, just just one final question, um, just about you know your competitors. Who are your major competitors? And I, th I think you touched on you know earlier in the presentation that really this it's very niche what you're doing, um, and lots of lots of people are kind of doing stuff around the periphery. But do you have any direct competitors? <laughs> Uh, so there, it's it's uh, hard to we would say in a simple answer there's no direct competitor. Yeah. We obviously have competitors who record phone calls for enterprise and do work with service providers. Um, what we I suppose as we just discussed is as the market is becoming broader in regards to you've got service providers who used to run networks, you've now got Microsoft Teams in the market, you've got Zoom, you've got Win Central. Because we've run a platform that is delivered effectively one platform globally that we take content from every every network we, or every service we're connected to and centralize it. Uh, we don't have that as a direct competitor in the market. Um, we were un very unique in the way we've built our technology and deployed it globally. Uh, the result of that is that we can offer a, a solution to the smallest of business or up to the largest of enterprise that is very different than anyone else could do today. Every other service, every other recording option or AI option is very siloed to the network or the actual application they're connected to. Dover is, I think, ubiquitous is probably not a word you could use across all the networks we're connected to. And that means we can be very different than any other provider. In the world. There are traditional, we didn't invent call recording, obviously. Uh, there are traditional call recording vendors and the, and the customers don't, who don't know about Dover obviously are challenges to penetrate the market globally. We think the quickest and most effective way of doing that is to be part of the telco service. So in other words, let, let be part of the network. We're never going to be able to go from business to business on a global level and, uh, and evangelize our product. So to make call recording a product and similar to how voicemail or, or SMS is today, a standard feature in global networks, that's how we penetrate the market. And so for that, there are no competitors for it. Excellent. All right. Well, I think we might leave it on that note. Uh, Stephen, James, it was great to chat with you um, today. Enjoy your wet visit to Sydney and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate it.